Hello, we are continuing our exploration of the uh, wave mode and pressure mode uh, propagation of sound by exploring what uh, the port does in your subwoofer or just uh, any other normal speaker cabinet, either a bookshelf speaker or a floor stander people, uh, <laughs> not people, not loudspeaker. So basically a port in a loudspeaker cabinet operates in both pressure modes and both wave modes. And uh, the function that it fulfills in pressure mode is the primary function. And, and the result of this pressure mode operation is that very low frequencies can be transmitted through this port into your room. So you can hear the 20 to 200 hertz frequency range and not exactly the same for every port and every subwoofer and every bookshelf speaker. It depends highly on the size of your uh, loudspeaker and the tuning of the port. What is the exact range that will be transmitted through it? But that's kind of like uh, the generic range in which uh, most ports operate the 20 to 200 hertz range and in this range they operate in pressure mode and the lower we go in frequency the deeper we go in pressure mode so it means that the uh, uh, speed at which the air exits the port will be higher and higher and there's also a consideration to be made that the dimensions of the port affect the frequency window where the port is open. Why is that? Because the port is basically a horn. And uh, now, if you don't believe it, what is a horn? A horn is, is, a, is an acoustic device, so it's a, an acoustic coupler that you put in front of a pressure producing device, be it a, a loudspeaker driver, a compression chamber uh, of a compression driver, or be it the inside of a base reflex cabinet. And where it all starts, that's called the throat. And the diameter of the throat, uh, basically, uh, even we are talking uh, about wave mode. I have to jump a little bit here to explain this. So, so the diameter will give you uh, the lowest frequency that will be amplified by the port. And then it will have a certain length and then it will have the other end which is called the mouth. So the diameter of the mouth will determine the lowest frequency that it will be amplifying. So highest frequency and lowest frequency, provided that this is the larger one, the, the, uh, the mouth is the larger one. And the amount of amplification that's given to the sound is determined by the length of your port. So what does this mean? So this has several effects. One of them is that if you make your port longer, then uh, you are forcing the effect of the port. And uh, in wave mode, you are basically, uh, what you are doing is that you are amplifying those frequencies which start from here and end with here, more and more and more. So you get greater dB amount of amplification. However, in pressure mode, we have different uh, lows working because the sound is not propagating at the normal pressure. So the pressure differential between here and there is widely different and the frequencies that we are trying to transmit do not correspond to the frequencies supported by the port, but they are way, way lower, an order of magnitude lower or even more, two orders of magnitude lower, and even more than that. So what happens when we make a port longer, it's not just uh, that it amplifies the wave mode response more and more, but it also gives greater directionality to that uh, stream that it's exiting. 
So what it's doing in case of uh, the pressure mode is that it's forcing the window, the acoustic window where your port is open for pressure mode operation to be narrower. So what on earth is this? Uh, I will need an empty board for that. So here, let me just clear this from uh, screen. Uh, black screen, right? Show, right? How do I delete those things? Sorry, guys. Erasing. Yes. Bingo. Uh, so what's doing is that when you have a port, so now let's imagine this is our port for our subwoofer. So here is the cabinet. That's the cabinet wall. And this is a cab and there's the port inside that. Uh, so here what's happening is that you see this. So here's the driver. There's our driver. So inside this driver is creating all sorts of frequency uh, changes. So it means that there is like pressurization inside the cabinet corresponding to whatever uh, frequencies that the, the driver is producing and what the port is doing that it is tuned to a certain frequency which is the port tuning frequency and it will allow one octave uh, of sound frequencies to pass through it centered on the tuning frequency so what does that mean so basically, let's say that our port is tuned to, let's say, 30 hertz. Then this port will be open for one octave of energy, which is something like 25 hertz to 50 hertz. So it means that if you have a, a port of tuned to 30 hertz, then it will roughly do most of its job, about 80% of the uh, energy that can pass through it will be of this frequency that one octave between 25 to 50 hertz and if you make this port shorter then basically you, you are making this window wider so you can go maybe like 22 hertz to 60 hertz if it's way shorter and if if you are making it longer, then you are closing down this window. And, and then the, if the closer you make the window for the port to work, the more um, problems you can have with the sound. Because as your driver's response is falling off, that, that's, that's what your woofer is producing in the front then the port will also add you some, some low-end extension and the combination of these two responses will give you the uh, ultimate curve that the base response that you have. Now, if you make this too long, then this curve added by the port will be not, not, uh, not a nice wide uh, band, but it will be a narrow peak like that. So then you will have a, a peak, which means that uh, at 30 hertz, you will have a, a really boomy extra 30 hertz, but the 50 hertz to 100 hertz, you will have a, a, a gap over there. So like the total frequency extension will be like, you will have a valley and then it comes up and falls down. And this is what we don't want, right? We don't want that valley. We don't want any special attention for that region. And that's why we have to keep the port length to a reasonable size. Um, that's a little uh, side track, but an intricacy and, and just to help you explain how the pressure mode works. So basically, uh, the port presents a window between your room and your loudspeaker interior that is open only for a certain narrow range of frequency. And by changing and the port length, you can tune this uh, frequency range, how wide it is and how big the amplification is. Of course, uh, the energy, the total amount of energy transmitted is always the same. So you cannot have a big hump 
and you cannot make it a, a, a wide hump at the same time. So with the port, you either add a lot of energy to a very wide, uh, narrow band of frequencies, or you add a little bit of energy to a wider range of frequencies. And that's why there is no free lunch. You have to pick one. And of course, you want to optimize so that you have a reasonable uh, uh, band as well, frequency band and reasonable amplification. <sighs> However, what's happening is that uh, through the port, the sound does not exist, exit the same way as it exits in front of the driver. So in front of here, uh, basically there is no uh, additional propagation speed because the air is just moving back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and it's totally harmonic with, uh, with, with, with the speed uh, at which the sound waves are traveling. However, through the port, because you are unable to transmit that ultra-long uh, sine wave that corresponds to the frequency, the air is leaving at a much greater speed compared to how it would leave if it would be going from the front or how it would leave in wave mode. And because of that extreme speed, after it exits your uh, port, then it basically experiences a kind of like a, a head-on collision with the air in your room. And it has to uh, slow down from uh, really, really high speeds. And uh, that if you squeeze out the air at high enough speeds that are at 10% uh, of the speed of sound, then you will hear it as pretty bad chuffing. That, that's when, as Paul McGowan saying, the subwoofers are farting. Uh, and that's the weird noise you hear because the differential in, in the speed, how it's uh, exiting and how it should be moving. So instead of it doing this to the air, it, it's going out, whooshing and rushing out like a tsunami. At, uh, going out at a speed where it's not supposed to be. So one side effect of that is that with a small cabinet you can create uh, low enough frequencies that would not be uh, possible with the laws of physics only if you had a big enough cabinet. Now you can have a tiny cabinet and you can just pressurize the air out. So what is the drawback of doing this thing? Because we are not transmitting the sound wave as it was formed inside your cabinet, but we are squeezing it out. We are losing a lot of the information that was contained when that pressure wave formed. And the information that is lost is the dynamic information. So that's the price that we are uh, paying when we are using pressure mode to produce bass. And, um, and eventually we are not paying uh, the same price for every uh, pressure mode application. Uh, there are various levels. So let me just clear the board here. Screen, well, here, oh here, erase, think. Bang. So basically, if we are here at wave mode reproduction and here we are at the pressure mode reproduction, these are the two opposite ends of the scale. So we can get here with horn speakers or transmission lines. Let me just draw a void pipe here. We have the driver in the center and we have a gigantic port opening that's bigger than the diameter of your driver. So basically the air can freely uh, go in and out of the cabinet, there is no uh, barrier to the pressure change. So the sound wave can continue. What sound wave exists inside the cabinet, that's the direct continuation of the sound waves that are formed in your room. And there is no uh, pressure transformation occurring 
in, at this interface. And when we have our uh, subwoofer cabinet with, or, with a tiny port, then we have a tremendous pressure differential between uh, uh, what is exiting the port and what, what is outside in the room. And, and the bigger that pressure differential is, the more your dynamic range is compressed. This is laws of physics. You can do anything about it. The only thing you can do is increase the diameter of the port and increase the size of the cabinet and increase the size of your woofer. Or maybe just make the subwoofer's woofer be uh, capable to have a longer excursion. So basically you need to maybe make sure that you have a, a bigger diameter uh, port opening. And the bigger the diameter is, the smaller the difference between the pressure inside the port and the pressure in your room. And by making that port size bigger and bigger, you can get closer and closer to the ideal wave mode uh, propagation. And, and guys, that's the secret. That's why uh, when you have a bigger size subwoofer with a very large port in it, it has bass that, that sounds so much better than a tiny subwoofer with a, with a teeny weeny port in it because uh, it can give a wider dynamic range and and a tiny subwoofer it might be able to achieve the same SPL as a big sub and that's what we are seeing now the subwoofer technology is rapidly evolving and we have like teeny weeny subwoofers putting out SPL as much as the big subs used to put out 10 and 20 years ago. However, what they cannot do and they are never going to do because of laws of physics is that they will never be able to have the dynamic range that a bigger sub produces. And even the bigger sub cannot have the dynamic range of a horn or a transmission line because uh, it, it needs more bigger uh, port size, bigger opening to breathe. And, and why cannot we give the same port size opening as, as a void pipe has to, for a subwoofer? Because the bigger, the wider you make a port, the longer it needs to be. And such a port size that would make your subwoofer operate in, a, in a close to wave mode, the length of that port would be many, many times the size of the subwoofer. So basically for a nice size sub, if you want a port big enough to allow uh, wave mode propagation at 20 Hz, you would need uh, a 10 foot long port to do that. Obviously, you don't want a 10 foot long subwoofer in your house, right? So thank you guys for tuning in and these things I will go over next time. I hope this was illustrating and, uh, and helpful to uh, talk, to mention, to have an image about what, uh, what uh, the subwoofers are doing, what the base reflex ports are doing and why having a, a, as big port as you can have is very beneficial for you. You are getting better dynamic range in the base response, but the price is you are going to need exponentially longer port sizes. And, uh, and soon you will realize that if you want a dynamic base, efficient base, then you really have to go for transmission lines and, uh, and go into horn territory because you are suddenly arriving there so thank you guys uh, have a wonderful day please like and subscribe bye bye